Hello everyone, it's Mystic here, and welcome to At Times Remastered Beginning. So, I've decided with the DLCs coming out, and just how rough of a time I've had trying my hardest in my own save file, I'm going to change my rules a bit in regards to how I'm playing. It won't be a full 100% gameplay, so not every collectible will be attained. I will collect every timepiece, and I will do all the story-based results and missions that I could obtain. However, I plan for Seal the Deal's Death Wish to be live-streamed. As, to me, it's going to be probably a video per. And welcome to yet another day of space adventure. You are only five light years away from your destination, home. The fuel tank is full and the ship is flying at full speed. Today's to-do list contains waking up, adjusting the engine. As you'll notice, the game more or less is identical at the start from my initial playthrough. However, due to the DLC update, some things that were a bit off before the DLCs came to console are resolved. Most importantly, the bug where in a new game after your first playthrough, you could only use one badge. And, of course, since this is the DLCs now, you can obtain everything out of rifts due to having enough rift ponds available. Oh, rift tokens, not ponds. However, there are a lot more collectibles. But for now, let's carry on the story. As the game's telling us, we can use L2 to find our goal with the Kid Hat. And as we can see, there's a guy just floating in space. What is this? Flying boat? All boats need to pay toll in Mafia Town. Even in space! Mafia come in to collect. Chapter 1, Act 1. Welcome to Mafia Town. If you've not seen my Hat Time Originals, where I did the first eight episodes, you will probably be confused as to why I'm talking about some things that appear later. That's because I've technically already done this, however, I forgot I had assist mode on because of Death Wish being a lot harder than I desired. However... Even if I'm replaying some bits, I'm going to treat it as though the originals didn't exist. <coughs> Did fellow Mafia watch TV last night? Confusing science owls say small people can jump double in air. I saw. This makes Mafia uncomfortable with body. Must go work out. Essentially, the Mafia here just said, we can double jump. 
We also, though, have... Fault codes. These are exclusive to Mafia Town as they contain vaults here. Collecting all the pieces, though, for the vault code as you open up the vault. In which case, we gain more ponds, which are these collectibles with circles and diamonds, and more importantly, yarn. We need yarn to stitch hats. As I carry on quickly chasing after this girl, I'm going to describe a little bit about what I need to do for this beginning due to it being a restart. The episodes won't exactly be the same, so there will be a few things I do earlier. Whenever a character is talking about timepieces, you'll get an icon for them with a word in blue, which is what they describe the timepiece as. Any words that a character says that are red commonly have some form of importance. In this case, she said Mafia Town, which is the location. Ironically, I already pushed the button, but she wants me to push it again. Now, while L2 is to use your hat ability, holding R2 while standing still lets you crawl. And I've obtained Brewing Yarn, a different type of yarn. But first... The Sprint Hat. A vital thing for most people, as it allows you to run much quicker than Hat Kid walks. However, the price for the speed comes at your jumping. You can only jump one time when you're activating Sprint. Here's a chest. Every location will have, at minimum, a few of these, which are in base game. DLCs commonly don't really have these. As you can see, I got a PC on out of that. You can also obtain other things, but I'll get to those a bit later when it comes. You also might have noticed, Hat Kid can climb up walls. Oh well, you can't really see it due to the edge of that building, but right here you can see Hat Kid can climb up walls, but it's not really that much. However, you may also notice I'm back at the beginning. Mafia Town is a giant circle, but believe me when I say it's wise on your first coming to check everywhere. As by the start of the game, you have minimal ability. You want to get as much of it as possible. Ah, here's the other item. Relics. For now they don't have a use, but you'll eventually see why relics are more or less vital to gameplay. You also might notice I'm not actually going to Mustache Girl yet, or at least in the normal fashion. That's because I want to go and collect up enough yarn 
to obtain the other hat. The thing about hats in this game is you can use any and all yarn to make any hat as long as you've got enough and as long as you've picked up at least one of the yarn based on the hat. If you press options you can enter your menu. Here you can see your level collectibles, these are exclusive to the level that you're in, and then general collectibles. These are things that will carry through every single location. And over here is your hats. Sprint hat, as you can see, lets you sprint. The kid's hat will search for the timepiece. And as you can also see, I'm missing one more PC on for the next hat. You might think what I'm doing is a bit out of place, where I'm climbing up on these beams. In actuality, I need to do this to get another PC on. And, with that, I can now stitch the next hat. Gotcha. The brewing hat. This is great to pick up pretty early on, as it allows you to have a secondary attack. Holding down L2 long enough and then releasing makes you throw a potion. This potion can harm enemies. As you can see though, it takes quite a few hits. And for saving the man, he gave us more pawns and another PC yarn. We will need the yarn eventually again, but it will take a bit of time. Another vital thing about the brewing hat is due to the potion's instability, any items that contain this yellow and orange tape on them can be broken by the potion that you throw. You'll commonly be able to see the item due to the yellow effects all around them. Like this. Some do drop ponds, some just don't drop anything, and others can be majorly vital. So, even if you don't think it, always try to break every single one of them. Because ponds are your currency and that makes them vital. Me, Rebel Squad. You will want to be cautious though in this game, as you can take full damage. Hey, I think one of your junk pieces fell and smashed right into the market's fountain. Messed it up real good. When going over there, just avoid making eye contact with the Mafia and you'll be fine. Good luck, fellow rebel. See ya! And like that, Mustache Girl proceeds to leave. Where she goes, if I'm correct, she will just vanish off screen when she goes up those stairs. But. Due to the DLCs, you can actually do two emotes. On a controller, up on the D-pad makes Hat Kid do a sort of taunt. Down... Oop, that was an animal animation. Down makes her kiss. A secret emote though, which you can do by spamming up and down repeatedly, is you can make her dance. This became quite a meme when it first came out. But now... Now we obtain the weapon. An umbrella. As you can see though, when I jump and I'm near him, the square pops up. 
Fat Kid has a homing attack if you double jump and press square. However, on the ground you can spam square to do a flurry of attacks. Before I pick that timepiece up, I'm going to quickly collect this PC arm. And, I would say, mission accomplished. Our first timepiece is back. And it seems to be that one timepiece was enough to unlock the kitchen or the main hall. And the chapter, Mafia Town, is available. As you can see, areas are locked behind how many timepieces you have. Ranging from one which you need to unlock Mafia Town, but you obtain that early on, so let's say 4, <coughs> all the way to over 25, but the other areas are locked behind one door over here, which requires 14. So, for now, let's head on over and go Unlock another act for us, but first, Barrel Battle. This is a mini boss level, but it's classified as a boss due to it being the starting boss of the game. As you saw, and as you can probably see on the right, Mustache Girl has been captured. But more importantly, she won't stop shouting where she is. Now that we spawned there though, I decided it was best to open the blue vault now. <coughs> As you also might have noticed, you can chain your homing attack. There is a PC on inside of those. And let's open the vault. Giving us more pawns and another PC on. Before I go over towards Mustache Girl though, there's someone vital that we need to meet. And he is over here. Hi there, young one. I am from a far away land. I've seen every corner of the earth, and now I sell tiny pieces of my discoveries. You may call me the badge seller. For I sell and trade badges. I can provide you with strong abilities and upgrades to your hat. If you have money, of course. The badge seller is capable of giving you several badges that do different things. The free right now on sale are the item magnet, the hover badge, and the mumble badge. You might notice, however, the mumble badge has flies around it. This is considered a useless badge, as all it does is it turns all the voice acting into mumbling, making it unable to be heard. However, the other two are very useful. 
The item magnet will attract nearby collectibles, that being ponds, yarn, or anything. However, the hover badge is even more useful, as if you were to take any fall damage, you will automatically pull out the umbrella and slow your fall, removing any fall damage you would have taken. I'm going to buy the hover badge due to just how handy it is to have on you almost all the time. And as you can see, it's on our hat. So you might be thinking, if you gain more badges, how do you change them? Well, in options now, we have our weapon here, and badges. So you can choose what badges you have on, you can see your weapon, and as for these circles down here, for now, don't worry. We'll come to those a little later. But... Now that I have got a badge, two hats, and not many ponds now, I'm going to go towards Mustache Girl, but I'm going to collect as many ponds on the way as I can due to me needing more for when I get more badges eventually. And even though I failed due to missing one pawn, I still gain quite a lot. I'll break this. No pawns. But I have 60 now. So let's go and fight. Hey, hey child, shoot! Mafia can't have child weakness when Mafia teaching lesson. It's awkward for Mafia. Mafia not sure what to do. Boss, what do we do with eyewitness? Teach her lesson, boys. And here we go. It begins and we need to attack several Mafia members. The first two aren't that hard as you can just spam square. However, by the third one, they suddenly will flare red, which means you can't actually just hit them with a flurry. However, when they're red, you can still homing attack. You can also still hit them with potions. Enough! Mafia won't bow to little girl. Prepare to feel Mafia's wrath. And... Heads up, little punk! Now, the Mafia member is throwing TNT barrels. However, there's a trick. Right here, you can stand, and he won't attack. It's quite surprising, but this is a 100% foolproof method of avoiding every single barrel he throws at you. As you can see, they all just bounced over me. Mafia need to take care of this Mafia style. Prepare to feel what Mafia do to old ladies. And now we fight him. This Mafia member, despite looking just like the other four, is a lot stronger. But, you can still take him out with ease. And just like that, timepiece has appeared. So, let's collect our second timepiece. What a 
a bunch of losers. Hey, you're all right, new kid. Do you have a name? No? You shy? That's cool. You're a less talk, more fighting kind of girl, I take it. That thing you grabbed there. Are you collecting them? Because I know where there's more of them. They've been raining from the sky ever since you arrived. I've seen the goons bring them to their headquarters way up there. <gasps> we should go up there and get your junk! It'll be fun! I'll take any opportunity that involves messing up the Mafia! You with me, buddy? And just like that... We made friends with Mustache Girl. Now, though, something's going to happen. Mustache Girl has come onto our ship. So, let's talk to her quickly. Indeed they would. First we strangle them, choke them and watch them beg for mercy. That'll show them. No, wait. Strangling is too kind. I would like to question, how is that too kind? We smash them together into mush and put their remains in a jar. Oh, now I see how it's too kind. Jar party will be no problem. We've got to get you geared up. Your hat is basic, and we don't do basic in this gang. Yarn can be found around Mafia Town and used to stitch new hats if you're crafty. I've collected one for you. And she will give you a sprint yarn for free, as this is the hat crafting tutorial even though I've already made all the available hats at the moment. You need more yarn for some hats than others. I guess being creative isn't free. <laughs> so keep an eye out for yarn. What she said is completely true. You want to keep your eye out for yarn as much as possible. Now you're a killing machine. Let's go get them. And just like that, we made a plan with Mustache Girl. Albeit a very uh, dangerous plan and very painful plan from, on her end, but a plan nonetheless. I would say this is a good point to call off the first remastered episode. So, this is Mystic Gamer, and goodbye!